Well, last time I talked about my least favorite light novel. So this time I wanted to talk a bit about one that I would actually recommend. And that's not saying that I think it's the best one I've ever read or anything. I just wanted to talk more positively about one. So this one is Onmyoji and Tengu Eyes. And there's two books in the series right now. What stood out to me immediately was the setting. There's a lot of isekai right now and reincarnation stories. And this one doesn't do either of those. This is more in Japan, a spiritual setting. So this is the kind of idea where spirits exist all over the place. And then you have mediums who deal with them. So the main characters, Misato and Ryoji, are... Uh, one is an omyoji, like in the title, and the other one has special eyes where he can see the spirit world. So I really like that setting, it really interested me, and that's what got me to look into it. And it is a pretty interesting setting. You've got the two characters, one's sort of monk-like, but he's more like a street monk. And the other one is more formal, and he has more official training. But because of an attack before, he also has a snake spirit inside of his body that will come out of him. And so he has kind of his himself in his body, and then he also has these this spirit residing in his body that he has to deal with, which is two pretty good, interesting characters to work with. Now, I would say the first volume was actually about average. It had good parts, but it also, it didn't set up their friendship very well. It kind of skipped over them becoming friends. They met up, they started living together because one guy had a house and the other guy ended up not having a place to live. And so it set that up, but it didn't really get into too much how they developed a friendship. They just sort of are friends now. It also had a little bit of a problem that you see a lot of times in light novels where it repeats information that you already know. But I was still pretty hopeful for it because I saw in the writing, the author is good at setting up a scene where you could see what's happening in your mind. I'm not usually a huge descriptive person. I'm fine with, you know, a low amount of details and stuff. But I could tell this author was pretty good at that. And I liked the setting. I liked the setup. I think the characters have interesting attributes. I wanted to see where it went. So my favorite part of the first book was actually at the end. It's a side story where um, there's this house that people keep inheriting and everybody who inherits it ends up disappearing. And so the person who has now inherited it is afraid. She contacts Ryoji in order to get him to like save her. She doesn't know anything about this house. She's way down the line of who's inheriting it. So she has no idea of history or anything. She was just next in line to get it. So he, you know, in protecting her, he goes to try and find this house, but it's not there anymore. It's been demolished. So he goes there at night and there's like a ghost version of this house that still exists. And I thought this sort of haunted mansion type of thing was a really interesting setup. He goes inside this house that doesn't even exist anymore. Like I said, the author is good at setting up a scene. So it sets up a really kind of creepy atmosphere with him going into this house and what's going on and why it's drawing people in and what's happening to them. I thought that really delved into the author's strengths and had an interesting little story at the end there. And the second book I haven't finished yet because I haven't had a lot of time. You know, I had to read some other books for my editing and also, you know, obviously do the editing. But I'm in the middle of the next book and I'm happy to say that it seems to have elevated from average to getting pretty good. The next book, what's happening is basically children are being lured into the mountains by some sort of demon playing tag. And so the characters are trying to deal with this there's a little boy that keeps getting called out there and they have to try and protect him while they find out what this demon is and why it's luring kids out and you know what its name is and everything so that they can deal with it. And it's a pretty interesting setup for his story and there's not as much repeating 
as in the first book. And you're also getting, you know, more interaction between the characters and setting up things. So it's one that I would like to recommend because I have pretty high hopes for it. It seems like it's going good places. The author seems like, you know, they have a lot of talent and I think it could get really good. And I also don't think too many people know about it, but it was nice to get something that was different from a lot of the other stuff that's being put out right now. I'm fine with Isekai, I'm fine with reincarnation stories, but I want other stuff too. And I like the idea of this snake spirit that slithers out of you know, Masato's body and he kind of shares a mind, not exactly a mind, the snake has its own mind and he can kind of understand what it's thinking sometimes. But the snake has a very simple mind and it can be more emotional because it's just reacting based off of kind of instincts a lot of times. And I just think that's a unique concept. I think right now I would say there's a fair amount of side characters because Masato works with the town hall. And so he has co-workers who do stuff as well. So there's a fair amount of side characters. I don't remember all of them. The author is trying to give them identifying traits. But there's a lot to remember. So I don't know all of the side characters really at this point. Maybe it's a lot of characters to introduce in fairly small books. But overall, I think it's pretty good. And I think as the author continues on, if they keep doing these sort of stories with these unique setups, I think it'll be a pretty good series. I don't really want to spoil too much because I think it has a fun take on the spirit realm where spirits just sort of exist. A lot of them are just doing their own thing and not harming anything. And they really only go after the spirits that are malevolent. Or sometimes the spirit doesn't even know it's harmful, but it is. So I don't really want to spoil too much because I think it actually has some compelling plot points.